Detectives have a new tool when it comes to solving cold cases, genetic genealogy. But genetic genealogy is not a silver bullet, and its use can raise important issues for criminal attorneys. Hello, I'm Jeff M. Brown, legal writer with the State Bar of Wisconsin. I'm here today with attorney Bicca Barlow to discuss her presentation on genetic genealogy at the State Bar's annual Forensic Justice Institute on January 19, 2024. To register for the Forensic Justice Institute, please click on a link in the video summary below. Welcome, Bicca. Thanks for being here today. So you have a master's degree in genetics. In addition to your law degree, you've worked on issues at the intersection of law and science for 25 years. You're going to be talking about genetic genealogy in the legal system at the Institute, as I mentioned. Can you start by just explaining what is genetic genealogy specifically? What is investigative genetic genealogy? Well, investigative genetic genealogy is a term that's been applied to the use of standard genetic genealogy techniques to the investigation of um, missing persons, i.e. like Jane Doe's, as well as identifying um, individuals who are suspects in crimes. And specifically, genetic genealogy um, uses DNA-based testing as the starting point. So, for instance, um, if a corpse is, is found, genetic genealogy can be used to identify who that person was. Or, as in the case of the Golden State Killer and some other uh, cold cases that people may have heard about, a genetic profile can be built and um, you might be able to find someone who is, say, a second cousin to the person who ultimately committed the crime. Is that is that accurate? Mostly accurate. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, misinformation out there about how this works mm. and that's what I'm trying to dispel mm -hmm. by doing trainings um, and one of them is that you don't generally identify a particular person using genetic genealogy you identify a uh, lineage or a group of individuals who may or may not be related to the person of interest I see so I see. It, it's, it's different than what we think of as the traditional cold case search I see. Well, what are some of the issues with its use other than, other than that one that you'll be discussing in your presentation at the Forensic Justice Institute? Well, the focus of the presentation is going to be the emerging legal issues around the use of the technology, because as many other DNA techniques, um, this is being rushed into, in my opinion, into the legal system without much scrutiny. And uh, the issues that I am focused on right now are um, discovery of information, you know, the, the documentation of these genetic genealogy searches, as well as issues that may or may not relate to um, the Fourth Amendment in terms of privacy rights of the individual who's in the case of someone being charged, if their privacy rights are being violated, or whether someone in their family's privacy rights are being um, uh, are being uh, violated. The other thing that is of interest in is, I would say, the cutting edge aspect of what I think about is um, the question of whether the use of these genetic databases, um, such as uh, MyHeritage or GEDmatch, um, is being abused by uh, law enforcement agencies to do these searches and whether or not there is some legal challenge that a defendant can mount to that that's based on maybe, uh, for instance, a prosecutorial overreach or misconduct. Right, because those are all privately held corporate creations, those data banks, are they not? They're all uh, private companies and they all have uh, privacy uh, policies in place. Some allow law enforcement searches, some don't. And the, even the ones that allow law enforcement searching um, will restrict it to certain subsets of the individuals in the database who have agreed mm. to that already. Interesting. Well, those are all fascinating issues. It's uh, sort of the brave new world, cutting edge of where uh, tech genetic technology is going in the criminal arena. And it's something that you can learn all about at the French Forensic Justice Institute. Again, on January 19, click on the link in the video summary below, below to learn more and to register. I look forward to seeing you at the Institute, Becca. And thanks for your time today. Sure, no problem.